Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and Brawl Stars just released some balance changes today. So I'm going to teach you guys the new meta in 10 minutes. So as you guys can see, there was a maintenance on November 14th, which is at the time of this recording today, and they nerfed a whole bunch of brawlers. So starting off with Mo, the projectile speed got nerfed by about 800, which is roughly 22%, and the damage got nerfed by 40 per attack. Now, to be 100% honest, Mo is definitely still the best or one of the three best brawlers in the game, unless your name is OG. Kenji's star power, which was the shield, got nerfed from 90% to 60%, and honestly, that shield was way too heavy, so that was actually a good nerf. And the supercharge from super went from 100 to 65. So honestly, those were two pretty big nerfs for Kenji. I mean, the shield is still really good, and the supercharge is still decent, but... That is a way bigger nerf than Mo got. And honestly, it's probably safe to say that Kenji does have some counters like Nita or Daryl or Frank right now. Next up, we got Larry. And Larry got a little bit of a nerf to his health. And honestly, this is kind of a big deal because Larry and Barley were both the two best throwers when they were both untouched. Now, Larry got nerfed, so he kind of falls off a little bit. So Barley would be definitely the best thrower. But Juju exists. I haven't even played her once on ladder yet, but I've played her in ranked and I've also played her in some pro scrims. And she is also easily one of the three best brawlers in the game. So now you have two brawlers, oops, that are better than Larry when it comes to being a thrower. And that is a big deal. That's a big fall off for Larry. Next up, Surge got a 10% hypercharge rate nerf, which is kind of a big deal because there are some games where you're a little bit hard stuck on Surge. And if you get that hypercharge, it can kind of bail you out. But maybe now you don't get it as often as you would before. Surge is still easily one of the best brawlers in the game. And eight times out of 10, Surge is easily going to get the hypercharge. But for the off chance that you do counter Surge, this is actually a good nerf. Surge is still easily going to be one of the best brawlers in the game, though. Next up, we have Gale. And honestly, I didn't think this nerf was super necessary. But Gale's supercharge from basic attacks got moved from 90 to 80, which is basically one more snowball or one more attack. I think it was a little bit of an unnecessary nerf. But if they were going to touch Gale, I really like that they didn't touch the hypercharge. Because in my eyes, Gale easily is the best hypercharge in the game. And that's what's really good about him. And you don't want to change that up. Next up, we have a Charlie buff. And they buff Charlie's damage by 40 per attack. Now, I don't think this is going to make a big deal, to be honest. Because Tara is really meta right now. And Charlie and Tara kind of act as the same brawler. But if Tara gets a nerf, I feel like Charlie is going to come back into meta. Or if Charlie gets a little bit of a tiny buff again, then I could see her becoming meta again. Next up, we have Ash. And I'm actually really interested by this one. So Ash rage got a buff of 20 percent and for those of you who main ash or play ash or just play brawl stars you probably understand that when ash has full rage he's one of the best brawlers in the game i've been saying for so long when ash gets a hypercharge he is easily going to be the best tank maybe ever so this is kind of the start to the full form that ash is going to get to but having more rage more often with ash is only going to lead to easier games so i think this is a really good buff and ash might have creeped back into the meta Spike got a little bit of an HP buff, probably not going to do anything. Same with Brock, also a little bit of an HP buff, not what that brawler needs, not going to do anything. So Clancy's is a tiny bit more complicated than the other ones. So just to explain, damage at every single rank for Clancy before was 800. Now at level 1, he does 600 a shot. At level 2, he does 700 a shot. And at level 3, he does 800 a shot. So it's already honestly pretty easy to just run at a Clancy when he's stage 1 and get a pretty early goal in Brawl Ball, get some gems, whatever mode you're playing. And this is only going to make it even easier. Additionally, Clancy's super damage at level 3 went from 760 to 700, which is a really big deal because level 3 Clancy, like, you just can't do anything to bro. He's just God. Now, I really like these Clancy nerfs because you have to make them different from Surge. And the difference from Surge is that Clancy doesn't go back to level 1 or 2 when he dies. Instead, what they're doing is they're making level 1 Clancy really, really bad. And that's what I like. You should be rewarded if you hit level 3, but I also like that they're changing that if you hit level 3, the super damage does get lowered, so that Clancy, again, isn't like literally god. Second to last, and something that I am so sad about, Frank got a damage nerf by almost 100, like what? Did I really just push 10k Frank for nothing? But I still think as long as Frank has the mechanic, where he swings really fast when he has low HP, he's always going to be a really good brawler. Then last but not least, Byron's supercharge rate went from 10 ticks to 9 ticks, which is actually a pretty decent buff, but I don't think one that Byron needed at all. So now I'm just going to talk about the top of the top. We're going to be going over the best brawlers in the new meta. We're really only going to go over the S tier. These are not going to be in order, by the way. I'm just talking about the best brawlers in the game. So starting off with Angelo, Angelo is just like the range goat. No one is better than Angelo. When it comes to range fights, she's probably the best brawler in both knockout and bounty. The hypercharge is really good. She does 4,000 damage and can also shoot from up close for absolutely no reason. And honestly, I see this way too often and it has nothing to do with the video. But for those of you who play Angelo, everyone just walks up and aims like this and then shoots a shot. But 
instead of aiming your shot, you can just hold down the auto aim to charge it up. And now you guys might ask, why would you do that? Well, because if you're close to somebody, you don't actually have to aim. You can just auto aim and it's going to hit every single time. So what I do when I'm playing is I just hold down the shot. And if someone's far, sure, I'll aim. But I try and like kind of juke and get closer. And then I just let go of the auto aim. And it usually hits every time if I'm really close. Next up, we have Amber. Amber is also easily one of the best brawlers in the game. Amber and Ash are the two brawlers that I've been saying when these brawlers get a hypercharge, they're going to absolutely run the meta. Amber's been S tier for probably half a year now. And that's kind of insane to say because she does doesn't have a hypercharge and hasn't had a hypercharge this entire time but like hot zone gem grab brawl ball you name it amber is absolutely unbelievable good into tanks good into mid-range she can pierce she could do a lot of damage burn grass you name it amber is a beast next up we have byron byron's a really good gem grab mid and really good hot zone mid i guess you can also use byron and bounty and knockout pretty easily but i think there are better snipers for those modes but byron is already like borderline s tier maybe a tier and then he got a buff so i mean i guess he's s tier now clancy's still gonna be s tier because once you hit stage three clancy is the best brawler in the game unless you're a level five surge but it's obviously going to be a lot harder to get there. The only thing with Clancy is I would just make sure you're not playing him where there's going to be snipers and throwers. Try and play Clancy on modes where there's going to be tanks. Because if you hit level 3, like, he would be the tier above S tier. But obviously, if you can't get your levels, like, Clancy sucks. So just make sure you're playing him in the right areas. Then we got Daryl. Daryl's probably the best tank in the game now that Frank got a nerf. Obviously, we have to play the meta a little bit more so we know 100% what's what. But Daryl was probably already a little bit ahead of Frank. And now that there's that Frank nerf, I mean, Daryl's just definitely the better tank. Daryl's like literally good everywhere. So you can probably push him on any single mode. Just try and avoid facing like tank counters and try and roll into just squishy opponents. Now, I haven't done this in a while, so I hope I don't embarrass myself. But since I showed you guys that Angelo clip, I thought I might as well show you guys how to properly damage a safe. So when you're on safe as Daryl, when you're playing heist, you definitely want to use this gadget. You hit the safe three times. Yeah, you do a lot of damage, whatever, 18%. Then you go to the top left of the safe, kind of like right here, spin in a circle. And I messed up that time, but that one did 9%. Now, if you just kind of do it like running in the safe and spinning your gadget, you're going to do something like, okay, I don't know how I did 600. That was like actually wildly impressive. But you're going to do some random amount, which is what I was trying to say. So when you're gadgeting a safe, just make sure you start top left, go in a circle. And that's how you properly 9k a safe and do 12% damage. For real though, I think Frank might actually be S tier. I mean, he's still the GOAT. Like he still shoots way too fast and has way too much HP and the hypercharge is really good. And I, I still think Frank is the GOAT. He may not be S tier in everyone's eyes, but in my eyes and in my opinion, he definitely is S tier. So I'm just going to keep him up there. It might be biased because I have 10,000 trophies on Frank and I haven't lost a pro scrim with him in like two months. But I mean, whatever. Next up, we got Juju. I'm going to put Juju at the top of the list. Okay, Angelo didn't want to move from spot number one, but Juju's easily the best brawler in the game right now. Actually, that's a lie. Mo is as well. But to give Juju her time, she is a really good thrower. And the fact that you have like different attributes and different shots, dependent on what terrain you stand on, is one of the cooler brawler abilities that we have in brawl stars also she can walk on water for whatever reason you kind of notice that the two best control range thrower brawlers cough cough angelo and juju can both for some reason walk on water like it was okay when eve did it because eve was never super strong and never had a hyper charge or anything crazy like that so it was like wow eve can walk on water he's good on a couple maps but no juju and angelo are both insane so honestly them walking on water is like a little bit of a stretch but whatever but yeah, she kind of took the spot of Larry and Barley because her super is actually surprisingly really good. The multi-terrain thing is really good. The water shot that slows people is insane. The grass shot that like goes half the map for some reason is pretty insane. The normal shot kind of sucks, but like just don't play her on a map where you're going to have that normal base terrain shot and she's going to be really good. Kit's like low-key S tier. So like Kenji low-key, I don't think he's S tier anymore, but I'll talk about him a little bit before I remove him. He got a pretty big nerf before people would go like Daryl or Nita or you know, long range, I guess, to kind of counter Kenji. But now, like, Frank 100% counters, Daryl 100% counters, Nita 100% counters, Surge 100% counters, Clancy 100% counters, and I could probably name a few more, but we don't have to. Kenji's definitely still playable. Just don't pick him, like, first pick or second pick or something like that in a draft, and make sure you're not playing Kenji where there's going to be a lot of tanks or anti-tanks. Okay, Surge is also definitely S tier. He's probably the best anti-tank in the game still, even though he got that little bit of a nerf. I think the thing with Surge that makes him so OP is that once you hit level three or level four, you have speed, 
you have range, but most importantly, you also have a jump. So if these tanks want to like come at you or try and do anything aggro, you can just jump on them, which isn't necessarily a stun, but you pop them in the air. You know, it gives you a couple extra shots, your teammates a couple extra shots. Like it's pretty insane. You can't really push into a surge. I don't really have anything more to say about surge. He's definitely still S tier. For whatever reason, I feel like Rico like weirdly fell off, but I'm going to keep him in the S tier because he's definitely the best like control ranges brawler when it comes to aggro maps. Like if tanks are running at Juju or Angelo, you can get some kills, but you're probably eventually going to lose the game. With Rico, you can just shred everyone and it's absolutely insane. You do have to be kind of high skilled, but it's pretty insane what you can do with Rico. And I know they nerfed his gadget, but it's still so broken. Something has to be done about it. I honestly think this is my last brawler that I'm going to put in here, but we also have Stu. Stu's hypercharge is one of the best hypercharges in the game. I'd probably say top three. I've seen insane plays like people getting the ball and making a save and then going all the way to the other side of the goal and then scoring a goal on Brawl Ball. I've seen someone die with 10 gems, respawn, hypercharge all the way down the map get the gems in hypercharge all the way back out like it's kind of insane what you can do with Stu now and then on top of that for a lot of these brawlers for example daryl or frank or byron they don't really do that well into Stu. now there's also this ghost guy i forgot his name but he's like not in the game yet so i'm not going to talk about him but when i saw him in the brawl talk i was like okay like what are we even doing here this is definitely the best brawler like ever now honestly this somehow worked out to 10 brawlers that i thought were s tier so i guess this is my top 10 brawlers in the game now it's not in order so you can Pick what you like, pick what you don't like, but I think these brawlers are easily the best in the game. Oh my god, wait, I forgot to put Mo back up there. Mo is also one of the three best brawlers in the game, so you know what? I guess these are my 11 best brawlers in the game. That just ruined my perfect top 10. These are my best throwers in order, if you guys want to know who I think is a good thrower and who's not. These are my best snipers in order. If you're playing Bounty or Knockout, though, I would probably take Piper or Nani over Byron, Bell, and Gus. But in all the modes combined, this is definitely my order. I don't know how the dragon snuck in tier B, but he got there, so whatever. These are my best tanks in order. I put Ash that high because I think that's what he's going to be after the buff. Again, the balance just came out today, so I don't know exactly where I would place him. Before, he'd be around Draco and Bull, so I think the buff was probably enough to get him above sam and buzz but i mean we'll see but yeah that's gonna be my video for today so i hope you guys enjoyed and if you did like comment subscribe i'm gonna be back again soon and until then